Hey folks, this is Grease Scotsman. This Mero SDK level authoring tutorial will cover scene chunks. Scene chunks are an advanced topic that may require some time and experimentation to realize their potential. However, they are one of the most powerful tools at the level designer's fingertips and can unleash creativity, fidelity, and performance not possible with single scene levels. It is highly recommended that you have a firm understanding of zones with zone links, as they serve as the foundation for the scene chunk system. If you have not watched the tutorial video on that topic or read the related Mero SDK wiki page, this tutorial may be difficult to follow. The scene chunk system allows designers to carve a level into several smaller scenes. Scene chunks, along with zones with zone link, zone color, and zone chunk loader components, are used to define which scenes will be loaded around the player. These smaller scenes will dynamically stream in and out as the player traverses through the level. Careful use of zone chunk loaders and zone links will ensure parts of the level do not suddenly appear or disappear directly in front of the player and combat scenarios flow naturally. The scene chunk system is aggressive in putting all geometry, entities, and assets into a dormant state. Even the physics state of an object is frozen and stored when an object streams out, ensuring the most minimal resource usage possible. To enable scene chunks, the level creates inspector has a multi-scene toggle that enables the scene chunk streaming system for the level. Once activated, several additional list fields become available on the level crate. The root persistent scene is an always loaded scene and it should contain any items that should never be put into a streamed out or dormant state. This scene should contain items like the player marker, scene chunks, zone, zone music and ambience items, crate spawners, and any post-processing effects. Additionally, game objects with global properties, or items that will be visible across most if not all scenes, like the level's sky or the directional light, should reside in the root persistent scene. Light probe data is shared across all scenes that are baked together, so organize light probe groups based on personal preference. The data they generate will be aggregated regardless if it is gathered in the root persistent scene or organized across additional scenes. Prime candidates of level content that should be split off into separate chunk scenes include static geometry, baked lights, reflection probes, and other static resources. These scenes will be streamed in and out based on the primarily activated zone link and its zone chunk loader component. The zone chunk loader component lists which scene chunks should be loaded for a given active zone link. The chunks list on the zone chunk loader component should contain the current scene chunk and any other scene chunks that share line of sight with the current one. The compact gameplay considerations raised in the zone creation and linking video tutorial should also be applied to zone chunk loaders. A recommended practice to ensure smooth, invisible transitions between scene chunks is to always have the current scene chunk and the immediate neighboring scene chunks loaded as the player moves through the level. There are a number of tools to help with scene chunk creation. Once a game object with a scene chunk component exists in the Unity hierarchy, the zone creation tools will automatically add zone chunk loader components to any new linked zones. Zones created before a scene chunk existed will need to have zone chunk loaders added manually. Whenever a scene chunk is selected, a contextual overlay will appear in the lower right corner of the scene view. The Add Remove Zone Colors toggle will display handles in the scene view that will allow you to quickly add zone colors that should be members of the currently selected scene chunks zone colors list. When a zone chunk loader is selected, you can lock the inspector and use the buttons on the component to add or overwrite its chunks list. The zone creation and linking overlay has a tool that will help automate some of the steps needed to create a scene chunk. It's additive unity scene and will even attempt to move any selected root game objects into the newly created chunk scene. The scene folder path defaults to the active level creates main or persistent scene. To use the tool, input a file name for the new chunk scene without a Unity extension. Once you click Create Scene Chunk, any selected root game objects will be moved to the newly created chunk scene. A new game object with a scene chunk component will be created, this object's scene layers list will be automatically filled out, and the zone color add remove handles will be enabled to allow for a quick configuration of the new scene chunk's zone colors list. The multi-scene property on the level crate will be enabled. Don't forget to add the new Unity scene to the level crate's chunk scene list.
Zone colors also have a deeper role in scene chunked levels. Zone colors listed in a scene chunk define the areas that should be called as the scene is streamed out. Not only are any entities being tracked by these called zones frozen, freeing up physics and AI performance, but the static geometry and lighting and other assets that reside in the chunk scene are hidden, freeing up even more resources. Let's first walk through this test level that has been intentionally designed with holes in the walls so we can see areas of the map that would normally be hidden from the player's line of sight. These holes in the walls allow us to see that portions of the map have been streamed out. Without these windows behind the scenes, players wouldn't be aware that as they traverse the level, the areas that they can no longer see have been hidden. A simple quick jaunt around a square-shaped loop. Nothing out of the ordinary. But now, I'll step into a zone event trigger that will remove sections of the interior wall so that other areas of the level should be visible. Notice how only the room I'm standing in and the nearest connected hallways are active. As I step into one of the hallways, only the nearest rooms and hallways that might be in my line of sight become active. The two rooms in the corner that are opposite my position in the level are hidden. Zone chunk loaders define what scene chunks get loaded. To keep this design as simple as possible, I've separated the chunks into the main rooms and L-shaped hallways that make up the corners between the rooms. As I pass through the level, the areas that I could never see or reach from my current position are streamed out by the zone color component. Zone colors have a zone color manager that works behind the scenes with the zone linking system to track entities within active linked zones and freeze and hide any entities that are not in any active linked zones. This calling process is aggressive and will even freeze the physics simulation for the called entities, ensuring the positioning and state of the entity are preserved and persist while taking as few resources as possible to do so. Any additive scenes that are not in the active zone chunk loader's list of chunks have their contents streamed out, recovering even more resources. Now that we've seen the scene chunk system in action, let's start from a single scene version of the level that has been stripped of all of its scene chunks. The level has zones with zone links that have been connected based on line of sight and combat scenario considerations, following the guidelines in the zone linking video tutorial. But all of the scene chunk related settings, components, and configuration has been removed. In the zone creation and linking overlay, click the scene chunks tab. Select the root game objects of any static geometry, baked lighting, volumetrics, light probes, reflection probes, and other static objects that you want moved into the new scene once it's been created. In this case, I've already organized the chunk level content under a single game object parent. Next, provide a file name for the new scene. Once the Create Scene Chunk button is clicked, the selected root game object is automatically moved to the new chunk scene. A new scene chunk game object is created, and its scene layers list is automatically filled. Selecting the new scene chunk displays all of the zone colors that have yet to be added to a scene chunk's scene layers list. Since this is the Room 0 scene chunk, I want to add the Room 0 zone color. Notice how the zone color now appears with a magenta wireframe box whenever its associated scene chunk is selected in the hierarchy. Let's repeat the process for the hallway corner 0. Select the root game object that holds the contents that should be moved to the new scene. Provide a scene file name. Click Create Scene Chunk. Add the zone colors that pertain to this new scene chunk. In this case, we'll add the three zone colors that make up this corner. We'll now speed up and rinse and repeat for the remaining rooms and hallways. Next, we need to ensure that the new chunk scenes are added to the level creates chunk scenes list. This step is automated in a future iteration of these tools, but for now must be done manually. 
Because these zones were created without any scene chunk game objects in the level, we need to add the zone chunk loader components manually to all of the zones with the zone links. If we were designing the level from scratch, we could add at least one scene chunk component early in the zone and linking process to have the tools automatically add this component for us. The final step to setting up a scene chunked level is to configure the zone chunk loader components. This process is very similar to zone linking in that you will want to follow general line of sight and combat considerations since any enemies or objects that get called will be frozen. In this simple example, I ensure that if I'm in a room, then the hallways and corners that lead in and out of the current room stay loaded. If I'm in the hallways, I ensure that the adjoining rooms and hallways are loaded, keeping in mind that in VR, we can peer around corners, crawl, use the Nimbus gun, and so on, so you must consider every line of sight vantage point when both linking zones and setting up the zone chunk loader component. Configuring the zone chunk loader may seem confusing at first. The basic process I use is to first consider line of sight. If the player is standing in this zone with the zone chunk loader, what chunks need to be loaded so that there is no way for them to see any chunks stream in or out? For starters, we'll include the chunk that we're standing in. Next, expand to add neighboring chunks that have line of sight with the current chunk. It may be useful to consider including the next chunk beyond that, so that you always have at least the current chunk and the chunks ahead and behind the player loaded. Notice that for the hallways, there are three linked zones per each hallway corner chunk. Be sure to select all of the zones that are included in a chunk before you lock the inspector. The Add Selected Scene Chunks button will indeed update the chunks list of multiple zone chunk loader components, though the inspector lock will make it appear that nothing happened until you unlock and examine each zone individually. The visual gizmos in the scene can be very helpful here in ensuring that you're adding the proper scene chunks to the zone chunk loader list. With them, I'm able to verify that I'm adding the correct scene chunks by looking at the magenta wireframe boxes and comparing them to the selected zone chunk loader. Before you click Add Selected Scene Chunks, you'll have a visual representation between the selected zones and the scene chunks that you're about to add to the zone chunk loaders. To hammer home the process for clarity, I'm clicking the zone or zones with zone chunk loaders, using control click to add to my selection in the hierarchy. Next, I lock the inspector so that these selected zone chunk loaders remain the active object. I then control click and add any scene chunks that are in line of sight of the selected zone chunk loaders. I'm able to use the scene gizmos to visually verify my selections. Once satisfied, I click the add selected scene chunks button in the inspector. For a linear campaign example, here's a very stripped down representation of the beginning of Descent. I've removed anything past the dungeon and stripped out most of the geometry and models. Just leaving the zones and the scene chunks so you can get a basic sense how a level with Descent's fidelity is zoned, linked, and chunked into separate scenes. The player marker resides above the pit, in the field. After cutting the noose, you fall into the pit and crawl through the rocks, past the inventory tutorial statue and dogma obelisk until you reach the dungeon. I left in the cage where you obtain the blue key as a visual reference. You then wind your way through the cells to the dungeon exit. I'll now enable the scene chunk overview so you can get a visual sense of the zone and chunk breakdown. In a more linear campaign level, you can use twists and turns to break sight lines and drop offs to introduce points of no easy return. You then carve up the level so that the current area and the areas ahead and behind the player are always loaded. If your level has branching routes, you can use line of sight methods to keep the need to load multiple areas efficient. If you have large combat arenas with lots of enemies, design your level accordingly so you can get the maximum performance under those resource taxing conditions. Let's look at a potential misconfiguration that should be considered when placing enemies in a chunked scene. Crate spawners not in the root persistent scene will activate any time their scene chunk is streamed in and deactivate any time their scene chunk is streamed out. This usually has unintended consequences, like an enemy suddenly disappearing if the scene chunk that their create spawner resides in 
is called. The crate spawn entity will be despawned regardless of where they physically are in the level, at the very instant that the scene that holds the crate spawner streams out. If the scene is streamed back in, a new entity will respawn at the crate spawner. In contrast, enemies and items from crate spawners that reside in the root persistent scene will simply be frozen if they are in a scene chunk that is called. However, if they move into a new scene chunk, they will remain active even if the scene with their crate spawner is called. In other words, in most cases, it is a best practice to keep crate spawners in the root persistent scene. Scene chunks may seem complex at first, but the time spent organizing and configuring your level to work with them will be well worth the effort, as the gains provided by the chunk system are considerable. In addition to performance improvements, there are also some creative ways to utilize scene chunks, especially in campaign style scenarios, where you want branching paths and player choice to have meaning and consequence. I look forward to seeing what the community is able to create with these new tools. And if you have questions, be sure to join the Lava Gang Discord server and ask away. Until then, see you in the void.